Hi everyone, welcome to another Autodesk screencast by Zan Ta of Repo Products. This screencast will showcase how to create a custom casework that is wall-based family. If you like this video and would like to see more, please search for Zan Ta or VAR2016. Thanks for watching. Here I am in Revit 2017 under the new recent files window. I'll click new under families and we'll pick casework wall base. I'll click open and you'll see that you have a lot of content available for you to work with. You already have parameters for the length and the depth of the casework and you have an equality condition. Let's look for the insertion point because you always want to make sure you understand what is the insertion point of this particular family. And the way to do this is to take a look at selecting a reference plane and seeing if the fine origins is checked. And I can tab into this one. <clears throat> that one is not checked. This one is checked. So <clears throat> for all intents and purposes, the insertion point is right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the placement side front elevation. And you can see that you have a reference plane here that says top. And you have the uh, left reference plane and the right reference plane of your particular uh, wall-based casework. You'll also notice that their initial intent of giving you something to work with is to create a box, if you will, and it's sitting on the floor, sitting on that reference level. <clears throat> so if you were to create it this way and load it into a project and use it, it would default to being on the ground. This is the understanding that you're creating casework that is a base casework. In other words, um, you may have a countertop on the very top of it. It might have some doors that open up or some drawers that open up. And it's not particularly uh, a wall-based casework that's above high and overhead situation. So we'll do a base one for now. <clears throat> when we're creating this, we can create a simple rectangular extrusion. And you kind of have to think about how you want to extrude this to look at the design. If this is the placement side and I have a box that's going to be here and you're going to have a space inside and then you can have doors on the left and the right side that swing open, then you really want to extrude from this plane, this front placement side elevation towards that wall. If you were in the floor plan level and you create a extrusion from the top going down, then you might have instances where you can't extrude as a single entity with an opening. So let's head over to the placement side and I'll head over to the create tab, click extrusion, use my rectangular command and place it. Make sure you are locking and aligning the edges of the geometry to the planes here. If I hit the green check mark it creates a very simple extrusion. If we look at it in 3D you can see it's just a simple box. <clears throat> Let's head over to the floor plan view and again you can see that object that you're creating. You can push and pull at that edge so that it locks to the face of that wall and again looking at it in 3D you have nothing more than a simple box. So what if you need to cut an opening out inside this box? You can head over to the placement side and uh, I like to be a little bit ex um, exact when it comes to the placement of the thicknesses of the panels if you will. So I'm going to create some reference planes here that dictate the opening if you will and the thickness of the panel. We'll dimension the planes and then we'll parameterize one of them and call it panel thickness. Now that we've done this, <clears throat> we can go into that panel thickness and make it whatever we want, say one inch for now. And so it adjusts that horizontal reference plane. We can select both of these dimensions and assign it those panel thicknesses. So we can go back to this extrusion by selecting it and editing the extrusion. We can recreate or, if you will, uh, modify that design. And if you use the pick line method, you can lock very easily, like so. <clears throat> we'll use trim to corner. 
to clean up the corners like this. And down here, we're going to do something interesting. We'll do this, and we'll draw a little line for here. And we'll lock this as well. And we'll trim the corner. If I finish this sketch, you'll see that the casework is created. It's been modified again. Now, it looks like this. So if you want doors, you can create a separate family of a simple rectangular panel and load it in and align and lock it and mirror it. Uh, for the purposes of this uh, brief screencast video, we'll leave it like this as a base casework for you to place um, on your particular wall. So how do we use this in a project? Save this as a family. and We'll call it custom wall-based casework one. Hit save. We'll go ahead head over to creating a new project. Architectural template is fine. We'll use control tab to toggle back to the family and load into the project. Now that it's in the project, you notice it wants to place it, but it can't place it unless there's a host wall. So we'll go ahead and create a wall. <clears throat> and then head over to the families and head over to casework. And there's that one that we created. We can right click and say create an instance. Zoom in and you'll notice it automatically wants to place it on the left or, or top or bottom, or whichever face of that wall we pick it. So if we head over to 3D view, you can see, there you go. That's how you create a custom uh, casework that is wall-based to be used in a project. Now we can get a lot fancier, obviously, later down the road when it comes to the quality, the materials, whether the doors are there or not, whether the doors are families that are nested and can be swapped out from one type to another. But we'll get there when we work on other ser video series. Thanks for watching. And um, if you again, if you like, uh, search for more videos under my name or under VAR2016. Thanks.